Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeOMaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Do not panic. We are still going to do our birthdays. I maintain we will do our birthdays. Mike, a lot of people hate the birthday segment, so you're probably, what you should do is maybe just cancel it. No, I'm not <laughs> canceling it. I Too much maybe, work. You know what? It would be the perfect time to do the birthdays because what's-his-name's not here. I know, and we're, we're down two men, and you're starting already. Uh, but anyway, I, <laughs> I just... I you, are, you are harder to read than check off. You know I, that? <laughs> I got a uh, a Facebook message from a listener, Jeff, uh, Jeff Clark, who sent this to me. And uh, you know what? Every now and then something comes across my uh, my little kitchen office desk where I say I should really share it with you guys. Hmm. And I do this only periodically. Maybe it's because I'm getting old. Maybe because I'm an old fart. But I tell a story that the only time I ever saw my father cry was the morning that RFK was assassinated. I think it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. It was early in the morning. 1968, right? Uh, 1968. The uh, And... Um, Sure. Martin Luther King was assassinated in the same year, and Robert Kennedy gave a speech um, after he was informed of Martin Luther King's death. And I think this is not only informative for the divisiveness we has, have in this country today, but there's dated language in here, so be aware of that. But when you listen to this, and I think everybody should hear this, and if you've never had a chance to hear it, you're going to hear it today because it's only five minutes, and I wanted to share it with you. Okay. But I think it's one of the greatest speeches uh, ever given in American politics. He was addressing a uh, group of uh, predominantly African-American people in Indianapolis, Indiana. He had just been informed. He basically informed them, not basically, he informed them that Martin Luther King had been assassinated. Mm -hmm. And this is no teleprompter. This is speaking off the cuff. And if this is not amazing, and just listen to how he deals with race so much more head-on right. than we deal with it even today having an African-American president. So I just think it's an amazing little piece of oratory, and I wanted to share it with you, and then we'll start the show and get the yucks. But I want to thank Jeff for uh, sending that to me on the, uh, the anniversary of Martin Luther King's passing, and I think this is uh, pretty amazing. Listen. Could you lower those signs, please? I have some very sad news for all of you, and that is that Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis. Martin Luther King dedicated his life to love and to justice between fellow human beings. He died in the cause of that effort. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. For those of you who are black, considering the evidence evidently is that there were white people who were responsible. You can be filled with bitterness and with hatred and a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country in greater polarization. Black people amongst blacks and white amongst whites filled with hatred toward one another. Or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand compassion and love. For those of you who are black and are tempted to fill with be filled with hatred and mistrust of the injustice of such an act against all white people. I would only say that I can also feel in my own heart the same kind of feeling. I had a member of my family killed, but he was killed by a white man. But we have to make an effort in the United States 
We have to make an effort to understand, to get beyond or go beyond these rather difficult times. My favorite poem, I, my favorite poet was Aeschylus. And he once wrote, Even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own day despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence and lawlessness but is love and wisdom and compassion toward one another. Feeling of justice toward those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or whether they be black. We can do well in this country. We will have difficult times. We've had difficult times in the past, but we will, and we will have difficult times in the future. It is not the end of violence. It is not the end of lawlessness. And it's not the end of disorder. But the vast majority of white people and the vast majority of black people in this country want to live together, want to improve the quality of our life, and want justice for all human beings that abide in our land. With and what dedicate ourselves to what the Greeks wrote so many years ago to tame the savageness of man and make gentle the life of this world let us dedicate ourselves to that and say a prayer for our country and for our people thank you very much and two two months later, he would have been assassinated. He would be assassinated, right. Robert Kennedy you know, Jr. So forty five years, wouldn't you think? As a people, we might have made just a little more progress. Words, I think we need to listen to, and uh, let's start the show. Mm-hmm. It's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. We're on the entertainment capital of the world. Are you hungry? Peckish, hungry, famished, have an empty stomach, or just fancy a bite to eat. Then come down to Butterfield Sports Restaurant. At the Butterfield Sports Restaurant, you can dine like a true champion. But what about the menu? That's a very good question. The menus haven't been delivered. But if you ask me about the food we serve, I will try my very best to remember. Here are the chef's specials. Javelin and cloud dinner. Hot mini cricket stumps and fried flag. Tomato and tennis shoelaces. Sports bread. And you simply must try our signature dish. The Butterfield Sports Pizza. Just listen to these incredible toppings. Energy boxes. Replica ping pong bats. Sport ball bobba bombs. Decorative plastic exercise man. Poor man's football. Sportsman's crunchy desks. So what are you waiting for? Book now. Please remember to bring your own chair. It's the Michael Mara Show. Michael Mara. Buzz Burbank. Rob Spiewak. <laughs> Oscar Santana. <laughs> and now, from his couch, here's Mike. Yeah, you see, uh, in the last segment, at uh, the beginning of the show today, we can be a little... Uh, Serious once in a while, but then we go back to being idiots. Exactly. <laughs> really like bon, 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 bon. We are live from the Studio 1K Superplex. Uh, the Pfeifferplex. Want to take that from the top, boss? Live from Studio 1K in the Pfeifferplex Broadcast Center. This is the Mike O'Mara Show, downloaded worldwide 17 and a half million times, powered by Encore Insurance. We're at MikeO'MaraShow.com, 102.9 FM WTNT in Washington, does <laughs> and <laughs> Incredible. The buddy... <laughs> 1630, KC Jaja. <laughs> Steve Bridges yeah, is it. incredible. I adult. can't get it out of my... And let's not forget Tobolo. <laughs> <laughs> today, today is Thursday, 
April 4th, as we mentioned earlier. Our show today brought to you by Vistaprint.com. That's right. Hey, business it is. owners, you know the importance of networking. You know the professional cards are essential. Now, thanks to Vistaprint, you get those great deals. 250 business cards for just to double. That's incredible. I just ordered some for you. You Oh, yeah, because I'm going to the thing, yes. and I want to hand them out to the people yeah. at the thing this weekend. Very easy to use. Uh, Are you going to promote the thing? The thing? Yeah. No. Okay. No, it's oh. one of them events. Oh, it's one nice. of those It's already events. sold out. Oh. It's, it's the Blue Bloods. Anywhere oh. Mike O'Mara goes, it's sold out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm a hired help. I'm a hired gun. I'm a circus clown again. I'm doing an auction this weekend oh, for, fun for, you. for helping Haitian angels. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I am a hired help. And uh, when you do an auction, as Oscar and I have discussed before, you are, you know, you're immediately looked at like a, uh, a used car salesman. And yeah. it is one of the worst gigs you can grab. Uh, and a I didn't want to say that before you know, I don't mean, into it. Right. I, I don't mean this event. Yes. I mean the title of auctioneer is not a great one to have. That's this what true. he meant. That's Thousands right. of designs uh, at Vistaprint.com, or you can upload your own. Uh, Heavy paper stock at half the regular price. To get this offer plus free shipping, go to Vistaprint.com. And I sound all over this room, Rob. And enter the code TMOS in the search bar. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Well, now you're off mic. That's not going to help. 250 top quality cards with free shipping for just 10 bucks. Go to Vistaprint.com and enter the code TOMOOLS. <laughs> now, it might sound silly, but yesterday this worked. Lower your microphone about an inch. Mm. No, that's more than, that? that's more than an inch. <laughs> How's that working? I want it dead center on your mouth. Hey, how oh, are you? Oh, hey. Oh, hey, that's all the difference in the world. Just trying to top out. Hello, J- heck one, too. Yeah, but I mean, it's not a really you know technical thing. I think you need to go back to your old mic. You think so? No, yeah, I no. do. I mean, this has been an ongoing saga. Yeah, this microphone is, is effed up every single day. Yeah, yeah. It, it, now, there you're saying that. No. no, but there are days when you come and you say, oh, my God, it sounds fantastic. How many days have I said I that? I think there's more days that he said it sounds like S. That's true, but that's always mm-hmm. been the case. Let's welcome our guest. We welcome uh, from the Mark and Lowell show and also the uh, Television Hill uh, area of Baltimore, <laughs> Mr. Area. Uh, Lowell, Lowell Melzer. Yeah. From, uh, oh, good is. day. Good day. Lowell Melzer yeah, from hello. WJLA Television. And, uh, <laughs> w or WBAL. Oh, that's, yes, right, yeah. that's right. So Lowell is here from NBC4, and we are delighted to have him. Uh, what is the number on the... Uh, 11. 11. And I wish I got you, it down here. I really do. I really I watch you. I, I would watch you, well, if you go, every day. If, if you I go got to the it. beach, you go to the you go to you go to no, Delaware, Washington go to that City. Beach. You didn't get animation. <laughs> what Directv should do is, I know they're all, all about their their local. Should let you have it all a card. Yes, you know? Lo- yes, they should. Thank you. That's what. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> the the, the uh, uh, I would like to see Baltimore mm-hmm. and Washington. That's yeah. all I yeah, ask I mean, for. Best too. of both worlds. Is that too much to ask? No, for? not at all. Mm-hmm. I don't believe so. Ball, you know, Baltimore. but you know how Oscar he's got the digital antenna. I bet yes. you he probably picks up Baltimore with that. I would. You know what? I don't think I could here in Manassas, Mm-mm. but you I could know in I, Leesburg. I think you can, Mike. You know, uh, yeah. you, you can put it in your attic. Really? Yes. And it would actually bring in the put uh, that in your attic. Yes. You could put that in your attic. Yeah. So the effort that would be required to see Lowell mm-hmm. on Channel Eleven. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I, I like what him. I don't like him that much. Hire a Damn handyman, it. and you have a chimney still, right? I, yeah. But I, you know, I'm not. What no. you need is you need the antenna with the rotator thing. Remember no. those from oh, the seventies? Yeah. You know. You go, I remember um, that. A chimney sweep. Ex- no, 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 not oh. that. It's an antenna. I'm, a chimneyman. I'm dealing with <laughs> uh, my own television situation right now. Where I'm trying to get one of the sound bars. Flat screen televisions, of course, uh, do not have good audio, so right. you need now. And that's how they get you. Yeah. When you have a, a great price on a television, well, mm-hmm. it's true, Rob. Mm-hmm. It is. And also keep in mind what they do is they all focus on giving you the most screen and the least amount of TV. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you don't have a lot of TV, there's no room for a speaker. So I right. have been in the process of looking for sound bars, sound which, bar. which are basically speakers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or some, some of them have subwoofers, some of them don't. And I bought one yesterday installed it very easily however i have some questions about television technology that maybe you can answer Mm -hmm. for me and it is supposed to enhance the sound of the regular television and it didn't to such a degree that i liked it so did did you buy one with a sub woofer no no they said the subwoofer was built in don't buy into that crap so you need the big box with the low that's like saying that's like saying the the titanic had built in boats to save you because they have still be no good but they have tons of them that are uh on the market that say with bass response and this thing said bass 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 and i said if i don't have to hook up another piece of equipment i'm fine with that let me ask you a question okay is anyone in in the room familiar with the optic is it optic cable 
Yeah, optical. Yeah. In, infrared yeah. optic cable? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course. Okay, here's yeah. here's the question for it's you. It's just one step below an HDMI cable. Right. Well, I have mm-hmm. HDMI capability, too, Ooh. so that's the case. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, you. <laughs> you ass. How long did that take? Well, Mark and Lowell isn't right there. <laughs> you get paranoid when those two are sitting. Look, and they're sitting together, too. I yeah, know. well. We're trying uh, to stack some, cops. Should I, I stack some God. pillows I'm between them? Right I'm already wearing, I should be wearing Kevlar today, <laughs> sitting across the, from the Jewish mafia here. Oh yeah, that's uh, us. So the the optic cable it is a an infrared it's tiny cable, yeah, little mm-hmm. guy. But it has a little nipple on the end of it, yeah, and it for the life of me, I could not. It, I didn't get the perfect intercourse. So it's oh. kind of like being in high school again. Be, be, well, have Shecky, I'm asking a serious question here right now. I'm all ears. I'm trying to really figure out how I get it in the. But in the, the nipple thing. isn't even supposed to go in the hole. Is it, it? it can. Oh, Josh, would you be a dear, Josh Murphy, intern extraordinaire? <laughs> would you go up into the Omera boudoir and you'll see <laughs> and wait for Ooh. me <laughs> and wait for me. <laughs> I'll be there momentarily. <laughs> Please. There's lube on the uh, no on the dresser. There is that gray optic cable. It's still hooked in to the back of the TV, but you just take it out and bring it down here, and I'll show you what don't I'm talking about. Don't bring the TV with it, Josh. Don't bring the TV. It's a gray cable, and and the front part of it should just be lying out there, not attached to anything, because I disconnected my audio. Uh, your, what do they call it? Your the output? audio box. Your audio now, box? see now, I'm asking, now I need help, and you, now your, your audio amplifier? box. So the thing, well, give the, me the speaker. Give the receiver. Me the speaker. The receiver. Me, no, you, you, I know the mode you're in today. You're in the mode. Oscar's not here. Buzz is not here. And we the have guest. a special guest. Yeah. You are. You, there is. Fire. You are no more going to think of anything other than the next straight punchline. <laughs> That, that no, Mike, you are wrong. not going to assist me my today. Key, my key thing today is to make life miserable for you. Then thank I look for the punchline. You, it's working. All right. Now, All right, my question you. for you is, I yes. didn't understand what you meant by audio box. Do you mean like an amplifier? No, the, the sound bar. Okay, the sound bar. Which, oh, is okay. a, which really is a nice word for a speaker. A speaker yeah. They, yeah. they call it a sound bar because it's uh, it's supposed to enhance I was, the audio. I was unclear. So, you have mm-hmm. an ability to go optically from the television to the sound bar? That is the, the primary cable that is used on these devices is this little thing. Have you seen this And one? that came with it? Mm-hmm. No, I had to buy it, of course, oh, separately. Of course. Oh, my God, you should have gone through Amazon. But I, I, I did, who's to say I didn't? Okay. Sound sure. bar, also a great place to get a drink down in Ocean City on 33rd Street. Yeah. <laughs> the sound bar. The, the sound bar. bar. Hey, come over to the sound bar. We got crabs <laughs> and we got all the things you need. Come Plenty on. of Natty Boo on tap, <laughs> tap at the sound bar. Do you also You'll have, like it, I guarantee it. <laughs> Do you also have the ability to go HDMI out from your television? That I don't know yet. Because I would I'm do not that. Sure, well, yeah, but I'm not sure mm-hmm. a TV would have an HDMI out. It's going to have an in. So here's the question I have. Right. Do you see how it's got the little light bulb on the end of it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you see how it's got the little plastic place that yep. looks yes. like mm-hmm. it should sit in there? Mm-hmm. I couldn't, no matter how I configured it, jam this thing in. It never felt like it really seated Inside the uh, the plug, may I properly. see the wire? May it I might wire? be while you're doing that. It might be Mike that you just need a different a different wire. No, it's but if it's optic, it it's might standard. Turn. It's standard. You think yeah, that's so? it's that's the standard that cable. Like that's that. the standard cable, but it didn't fit into my TV that said optic cable input. Did you take the little mm-hmm. plastic oh. thing off the top? Oh no, you oh. didn't. That's a protector. Oh my goodness, Oops. that's a protector for the optic out, Mike. Oh, oh my wah. goodness! <laughs> come here, come here. Oh, wait, well, let me say what. Oh little, that little goodness. rubber thing. I'm such an idiot. Where, how come I didn't see that? It just comes off. You have to use your fingernails, and it comes off. <laughs> well, that's that, bullshit. Please, oh, please no. don't say that. Oh, my what did goodness. I ta- what did you take off? The rubber thing. What there rubber was a thing? rubber thing on the tip. On the tip, if put you your, Put your glasses on. Mike's unaccustomed oh. to that because he's Catholic. <laughs> 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 but it just slides right off, and then it'll seat perfectly. It doesn't sit. Just like the that? tip. Yeah. Like that? The, yeah. The rubber thing comes off. Just the tip. I, I'm sorry. That is the biggest bunch of crap I have ever seen it's in not, my it's life. It's not. It's, it's for optical. your protection. It's a fiber optic connection, and it's uh, delicate. It must be protected. And you How need to you know protect that? your... How, now you, you have been... Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. You have been amazingly helpful. Oh, stop it. But um, I have to ask this you. This is so shallow. How did you know this? I've done this before. Does that not look, really? And now you've jerry-rigged it a little bit, mm. so it's like kind of... I mean, it's actually... It look, does that not look like the bulb that should be? Yes. It looked like a bulb to it's me. Bulbous. It does. Yeah, but, it is bulbous. But now I want to reconnect it and see if it sounds send, better. Send Josh to go do it. That is a bulbous no, no, wire. He's not, no, he's not going to reconnect. No, he's my, running my the TV. cameras. Oh, I forgot. Uh, um, but you see, Mike, the thing is, is when you put it in and it didn't seat, 
Didn't you think to at least look at it? And, I stared at it. And were mm-hmm. there instructions at all with the cord? I don't think there were. I, I doubt it. I, who Do you really ever look at a cable Never. and look at the back of the box of a cable? I and always do. do. I always read the directions. You know, I can practically hear mm-hmm. the Facebook messages I'm going to get oh, right God. now. Bing, I know they're just going to go, hey, Mike, you didn't bing, even bing, know bing, that. Bing. Yep. So that's how it's supposed to look properly. Exact metal. Yeah. You probably don't even need those plastics. Just throw them out. What do you mean? You don't even need them. No, the I mean that once tips. it's once it's yeah. in place, you don't. Yeah, you don't need them. them. Yeah. But I mean, why do they? I mean, so that's For your why. Protection. So is that them. also why they have a little doorway? Yes. On the optic cable yes. input because they don't want it's this delicate. Stuff. It is mm-hmm. very delicate. Very it's fiber delicate. optics. Jesus. You oh. need to optics. Do you, you think need to protect I, your eyes? So obviously, <laughs> I wasn't getting the right sound. No, no. Got, as a so matter of fact, any my, sound. I'm surprised you're getting any sound. Yeah. I was really jamming it in there. Oh, God. Oh, God. It may be ruined now. <laughs> I don't know if it's ruined forever, but I've got to actually How ironic that something oh, designed no. to protect the cord would destroy the I'm speaker. Sorry. Was I, there I, any I, Was there any blood? Uh, <laughs> there was no blood. Uh, we have to get to birthdays. Lowell, I, oh, we're yeah. going to get to you in a second. That's no problem. Don't worry. We'll, we'll have the traditional all about you <laughs> no, segment. No, I don't need if it, If you really. come up all the way from Baltimore, we do mention you. Don't worry. It'll happen. Now, are you sure that what you're doing on your TV is actually an optical out and not an optical in? Please. We'll talk Does it open wait, up wait, to stop a suite? Please. Wait a I don't know. Please. No, it's got an out that in the back of the TV. Okay, I'm just checking. And then it's got an input into the speaker, and that's okay. what I hooked All right. Up. All right. Well, now God. that this, you, this should be flawless now. You should be fine. Well, should but be. I'm wondering, here. here's the thing. So I, I got up. sent. It was kind of like right there. But obviously, if I have Stop the that. full optic capability, yeah. mm-hmm. it's going to be like better sound. It should be. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, not only will the sound sound better because you've bought the speaker, yeah. it's being delivered in a much clearer way. Mm-hmm. i got to do There'll that. There'll be no decay right. at all. So that's the project as soon as you the show decay. is over. Yay. You know who he is? Decay. He is the digital man. The digital yes. man. <laughs> but, Rob, I never would have digital dreamed. Digital man. I give you credit for figuring that out within five seconds. That was good. Mm-hmm. And yet why I, you had better SAT scores than And yet that. I was never invited into your bedroom. <laughs> well, that's because you're busy running the board, and we sent the boy up. To yeah, the Mark could run the board. I Josh could go and wait. Can I give the birthdays, please? God, yeah. please. I, t- I knew he'd be at this speed. I knew it. there's a there's not a drug invented. <laughs> there is not a drug that I could give him. There is nothing I could do. So happy that would, I came slow, here that today. would slow him down. I knew so he. I, that's why I didn't tell him before the show. If I told him before the show, it would be a different <laughs> energy, and I couldn't have right, that because right. I need him to be funny. You'd rather wrangle him in. I. That's the only way yeah. I can do it. Yeah. I don't know. It's Mike, the ABC. Will you do the birthdays, please? Right. A few years ago, we learned about uh, a balut. You know that Filipino food? Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's a fertilized duck egg. In other words, it's the embryo of a duck. Filipino listener Ugh. Henry Lamibo, Lamibo, uh, and it's spelled L-O-M-I-B-A-O, remembered this on his birthday last week. That's the forbidden dance, isn't it? That's great. Thanks, Lamibo. Bro. Lamibo. Saturday, J- Dan Flurdy turned 38. He'd like some tips from fitness guru Brian Butterfield. No. No, we heard the best him treats already. to enjoy on treat day. Tiffany Anderson turned 22 on Monday. Well, he got uh, Mr. Flurity got his little yeah, Brian yeah, Butterfield. Let's just say that I constructed the entire show open for him. <laughs> Tiffany Anderson turned 22 on Monday and her boyfriend would like her to get a sexy greeting from Buzz because mm. she is so box. Unfortunately, Buzz mm. isn't here today. Wow, uh, he really he wrote, wrote this. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he wrote that. What an ass. Otherwise, he might have forgotten, Mike. That's right. Um, <laughs> do you want... Uh, you know what? In Unfortunately, the- Buzz isn't here. <laughs> Let me edit it. I'm okay, going to read please, it again. Please. Okay, please. Tiffany Anderson turned 22 on Monday, and her boyfriend would like her to get a sexy greeting from Grandpa. <laughs> Because she's so boxed. But fortunately, Grandpa isn't here today. May I offer this? Yeah, I rewrote it. May I offer this since Grandpa's not here today? You know, we, we all have ego on this show, but certain certain egos are pretty pretty interesting, aren't they? Since Lowell is sitting in Gramps' chair, Uh-oh. can Lowell do a sexy greeting? Would you uh, like to give Tiffany Anderson a sexy greeting, Lowell? Hey, uh, Tiffany. How's it going? <laughs> I know Buzz isn't here, but uh, all I can see is Lowell's eyes. <laughs> yeah, that big microphone. <laughs> yeah, and Lowell's looking at me like, hey, 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 he's concentrating on the sexy. All right, that's it. All this talk it. about why. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Oh, Angela Hunter. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tiffany. Uh, <laughs> Angela Hunter Trantham also celebrated Monday with the best birthday she's had in a while. She says this show helped her get through some rough spots, and she just wants us to keep bringing the funny. And Jacob Danes had a birthday on Monday. He's hoping to win Rob's Celebrity Apprentice Contest, and he'd like Rob to take Oscar out to pick up his dry cleaning. <laughs> well, uh, you took uh, Oscar to the airport this morning, didn't you? You should have seen us leaving from my house. I said, Oscar, get in the car, kids. I'll be right back. There he goes. Black smoke pouring out of the yeah. late model, old model. Sorry about that. It's fine. 
Just right. got it waxed. <laughs> On Tuesday of this week, Adam Apple Prater had a birthday. Oh, uh, yes. He would like to announce that he is our biggest gay fan, not Trip Affleck. Mm, I don't know about that. Mm. He might not be the biggest, but he's certainly the gayest with the name Adam Apple Prater. Adam Apple <laughs> yeah. Prater, happy birthday. He believes this will make Trip insanely jealous. Have you ever been uh, to a restaurant and ordered the Apple Prater? It's delicious. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Get it with ice cream. Not too much cinnamon, though. Megan Schweitzer <laughs> married a man who's listened since he was 10, and she got hooked during their honeymoon in Hawaii last spring. Oh. She turned 28 this week, and she'd like to be called by Rob the way he calls Kate. Carrie. So this is Megan, and you're calling for her, like, when Carrie yeah, uh, wants to bring you and something. And before that, congratulations on taking time during your honeymoon to listen to a podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My praise great. for the husband. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Megan! <laughs> Dana Cliver also had a birthday this week. She likes the doctor Mike took his daughters to in the Caribbean. The one who said, Is men diabetes. <laughs> the island's crawling with it. Yes, man, diabetes. You can't get rid of it on the island. The islanders, they're just rife with yes, man, diabetes. That is so obscure. Yes, today, that is a good one. I love those. I did. Terry Newtson turned 24. Her mom took her to our Reno show, and she's hooked on Mike's vocal impressions. Mom also wants Tori to know she'll be the best damned eighth grade English teacher ever. Uh, Sridhar Cowdley. Turned 49 yesterday. I think it's Schrieder. Schrieder? Yeah, because I no, went I, to school with a Schrieder. I really? thought it's, yeah. You, you're didn't, making it she, German, and it does no, not seem to be. Schrieder. It was, that's how he wanted it said. His name was Schrieder Charagundla. Was, oh, he was Indian? Yeah. It's I hope so. That's what I'm saying. Indian. Yeah. Schrieder. Schrieder. It's, Schrieder. I think it's Schrieder. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it's pronounced Richard. Can I change Richard Parker? Thank you. Okay. God. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to wait without? Turn 49. No. It's just going to fat drop. It's okay. It's okay. You're driving me out of my goddamn mind. <laughs> Robert. Street Robert. Art Cowley turned 49 yesterday. For him, it's our traditional birthday song. <laughs> yesterday, was, yesterday was also Katie School's 16th birthday. She listens with her dad in Portland, Maine, and they both love Dick Queasy. Mm. Keegan Lamberston is having a birthday today. We're guessing he's young since his dad asked for a Charlie greeting, but his dad barely remembered to tell us which day, much less how old Keegan oh, is. Oh, boy. Great dad. Hello, Keegan. Your dad has Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, Charlie had a yeah, late well, night. What's wrong? Charlie? Mm-hmm. Did okay. he? Is this a kid? This might be a carryover from Sunday. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Should very wow. well be. Charlie had a weekend. I don't know. There's there's illness in the O'Mara house. Everybody's oh, really? getting cold. Oh, no. Yes, it's getting crazy. Stephanie Foster has a birthday Saturday. She loves the baseball tickets her husband gets through score big brian colignan c-o-l-l-i-g-n-o-n that Kalignan, sounds good yeah i like that colignan uh, also celebrates saturday both he and stephanie point out that friday is jack cassidy's birthday uh-huh. and they both like a greeting from him well stephanie fast and brian colignan i hope you have a wonderful birthday and I hope we get more T-shirt entries that sounded as good as yesterday's. Yes. How do you like that, Columbo? <laughs> what do you think about that low Mercer in your weather suit? Wonderful. Uh, Jack Cassidy! Yeah. Thank you, Jack! Uh, it's Nate Wells' 29th birthday Saturday. He'd like Rob to remind us all what month it is. Oh, it's the month after March. It's, uh... And the letter of the week as we wrap up this segment. And uh, this comes from Claire Patterson. And she says, thank you. I regret clogging your inbox with more emails, but I need to tell you how much childlike joy and excitement came to my day from my birthday greeting. I played it to people over the phone and have listened to it myself multiple times. Thank you for putting it on the show. I know there's controversy on the birthday section of the show, but if this kind of joy is produced in the adults of all those you mentioned, just think it's worth it. I just think it's worth it. That's from Claire Patterson. Thank, Thank you, you very Claire. much. I'm sorry if this sounds insincere. <laughs> but it does. Pure. Yes, it does. But thank you to all the birthdays. And now we have to break for a commercial. When we come back, We'll have Lowell Melzer from Channel 11 in Baltimore grade himself as a weatherman. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Oh, wow. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. This segment is brought to you by Wait Not. Yes. Uh, you have been associated with Wait Not for a very long time. Right. And you have an, a, had a spectacular experience yes. with Wait Not. So spectacular that they even put you in one of their television commercials. If you had to, in one sentence, right. tell the listening audience why Wait Not is the best program available to mankind, what would you say? 
you lose weight fast, and you lose weight safe. That's it. That's, That's easy. It. That's I like easy. that. Call yeah. Weight Not. Uh, you can That's get in great. touch with them. Accelerate your weight loss. <laughs> great job. Now they're doing a range of Weight Not programs to fit most any budget. Plans now start as low as $5 a day, about the cost of a gym membership. And you can accelerate your weight loss based on the pace you like and your budget. With Weight Not, you'll eat the real, natural foods you can find in any grocery store. No packaged meals, no meal replacements, no prescriptions, no stimulants, nothing artificial. It's the safe way to lose weight and keep it off. Weight Not has helped thousands re- the success stories on the Wait Not Facebook page, uh, just like we share them with you here, and you'll really get motivated when you see mm-hmm. the people and the success they've had. To find out more, visit WaitNot.com. Wait Not, show us what you are made of. Can I add one thing to that? Go right ahead. I got a nice note, and I won't tell his last name because he might not want it out, but a buddy button by the name of Greg got yes. to me on Facebook, and a lot of people ask me about Wait Not. He said, I don't have much to lose. I don't need to lose 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. I need to lose like 25 or 30. Well, with this new program that Wait Not has, you can tailor it to yourself. So Greg, in lieu of a reply yes call wait not they can help you out you can lose Mm -hmm. any amount you want at the rate you Mm -hmm. want and at the amount of money you want to spend that is amazing i'm glad that you think it's amazing i do that's good that was very sincere. <laughs> I'm, I'm you know, the, somehow that didn't sound sincere to me. Well, Robert has that really you, lost a lot of weight. I'm impressed. Is that because you're not fat? Is that why you're not? I, am, uh, I have struggled not. with weight here and there. Well, yes. you, you have to be. Don't you have to be TV fit all the time? Yeah, you do. I'm. Uh, I'm boxing now. Yeah, you're boxing. I'm boxing for real. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Now, if you were a, a TV boy. That yeah. would seem to me to not be a good idea to get in the ring and do some boxing well, because I'm you not could break actually, your nose. I'm not actually getting hit. It's uh, you work in the heavy bag. Yeah, work in the bag. Right. Uh, and um, all the time, with, like, uh, do you work the my speed, trainer? Do you work the speed bag at all? Uh, I've not worked the speed bag. Just the heavy bag. Uh, you know, I, uh, that's that's a, a true skill. Is the speed? It bag. is, and you, that's fun if you get to know how to do it. Yeah. I, I'm, I, so long ago when I boxed, I was like in fifth grade. I was like I did it as a kid, right? And I had a heavy bag and a speed bag in my basement i used it for you know because i played a lot of hockey and i had a fantasy that you had to know how to put up sure. your dukes in hockey <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you do at a certain point my memory is so distant i wouldn't be able to tell you how to do use a speed bag at all now but i always want when i see those guys do it with a it's amazing i'd love to be able to do that so, someone tells me that once you learn it you don't it's kind of like riding a bike i think mm-hmm. you just have to get in that sink you so, probably would get did it you ever were you, you ever able to do the it. rhythm thing where you was yeah. able to keep it going you were yeah. able to do it yeah and not, well, not, not a drummer not well but it was uh, there's a, it's technique. It's all technique. That's all it's, uh, required for that. But I'm shocked that uh, you know if I was going to pick a person out that would yeah. not be a boxer, it would be you. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's great. <laughs> It's the the fitness is value in it is amazing. Well, I think the one of the reasons why he got into it was a friend of ours that we went to sex camp with. Right, uh, opened up this boxing gym. Yeah, and, so and it's down the street. Is, is it free? It's not free, but it's a good deal. <laughs> you bet. It's a good deal, my friend. Did you boys ever get in a physical altercation? All the years you've known each other, your childhood friends. Did you I ever mean, get in maybe, a, no, maybe just some, verbal? Maybe some pushing and shoving. Yeah, and a tremendous amount of whining. Oh, oh God! Yeah, oh yeah, imagine, right? constant, tremendous amount, <laughs> so, tremendous. Uh, give us an update on the uh, Lowell Melzer resume here. You are now uh, still on uh, WBAL. Correct. You're doing occasional anchoring. I know the last right. time I saw you on Facebook, you had done uh, some anchoring on Easter Sunday. Right. Yep, we did that. And that's not that's not the weather. You're anchoring the anchoring. you're at the news desk, yeah. Yeah. or as he calls it, Mike. He just calls it Sunday. Right. right. <laughs> Right. That's it, and you're doing that now with the uh, WBAL, right? Yeah, they're they're using the hell out of me, which I'm thankful for every day. You're how on TV been, all the time. How yeah. long have you been Captain Chesapeake now? Oh, I wish I was Ch- Captain Chesapeake. <laughs> My goodness, but that? I think Captain Twenty was was a little better. <laughs> Captain mm-hmm. Chesapeake was the local cartoon host yeah. on Channel Forty Five, really, with the yeah. uh, superimposed water in the background. Well, we had uh, who the hell did we have? We had Ranger Andy. When we had oh, Captain, the kid, the we had kid Captain, toucher? <laughs> we, it was Ranger Andy. All I know is I went to Linda Katz's birthday, yes. and Linda Katz and I hated each other and because uh, she was Jewish. That was just going to say anti-Semite. Uh, so, Here so, we go. So Lin, Linda, Linda Katz and I went, and we had the shot where they do a, they do a slow pan of all the kids uh, at the Ranger Andy show when it starts, and as they do the slow pan right across, Linda and I, of course, are sitting next to each other. Right. And Linda, right at the moment the camera went by, looks at me and goes, Oh, no! <laughs> and it was her birthday. Stuck her tongue out at you. Oh, and you I only had that. I remember, yeah. I remember we got uh, Hostess Cupcakes. 
and and all they were hostess was a sponsor yes. and so we got all hostess product it was like the you know the, the first uh, real moment that i discovered this product yes you know i not that i was a poor child it's just that you know we didn't yeah. I, and i was like oh my god these are uh, these are cupcakes that yeah. have the chocolate frosting with little squiggly line <laughs> yes. and inside there's whipped <laughs> sugared whipped cream it was so. It was like. Well, that wasn't whipped cream. It was frosting. Yeah, yeah. it was, was in the middle of that. It was good. But uh, Ranger Andy was there, and it, I mean, Ranger Andy was a local Hartford, Connecticut uh, TV show okay. that they yeah. did yeah. at the and, CBS. And here we had Captain Twenty. Captain Twenty. Mm-hmm. But right. I also, because of our, we lived on a hill, I could get Channel Forty Five. So I so also would get, check out Captain Chesapeake. If I'm not mistaken, Captain Chesapeake may have had some affiliation with Natty National Bohemian Beer as well in their little cartoons. But I'm not really. Oh. I'm not a hundred percent sure. That's on what that. you. Want a kid host that is do. a yeah. dying form of. There, there are a couple of things that have died in television. You used to have. Uh, I remember the show Panorama that Don and I went on way back when With here Maury? in Washington D.C. I think it was Pan. I don't know if it was Maury the host. At one it. time he did host it. Ross Crystal got it too. Yeah, I'm not sure who we were on with, but yeah. it was Panorama. But they used to have the local television talk shows right. which were fun and well regis uh, regis was a local Started, new york yeah. television show but it was so much fun and then they had the local kids shows and those mm-hmm. those, those don't exist best. you never had those josh growing up i have no idea what you guys are talking about we're talking about, about locally so, mm, locally, yeah. locally produced for the local affiliates like channel four in washington channel seven they had well they've got arch campbell now Arch Campbell. Yeah, but does. he doesn't skew to the kids. No, he not really. Yeah. The kids. Well, they still but, do It's Academic, right? That's yeah. Still it's happening. Academic would count as a locally produced show. We watched show. that together. Yes. <laughs> it's Academic. Mm. That's the end of the round. With red uh, hot Hillary Howard. And uh, Matthew McGarry. Right? Matt McGarry. Matt Ma- McGarry. Matt McGarry. I still, yeah. I think, I know we've disagreed on this, but Hillary Howard. I believe is uh, you know is a little doable. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can have her. I mean, I just in that. I'll kind take of, Mac McGarry. She's so <laughs> like she's so television nerd. No offense, please about yes, the. Yes, that's okay. But you know the people that uh, got straight A's. Yeah, and now yeah. they're on. Uh, now they're on television. Yeah. she's like that. But I think there's a minx inside of her. Uh oh. I think my uh, my cousin in law might have banged her. What? Oh what? my God! I think so. No, oh I know he God. dated her. You know, I'm. You know, Les. Yeah, yeah. My cousin oh, Les. Les may have. Yeah. Oh, I Les can't got believe a, you. Les got around. Les slept with everybody. Every, just about everybody. Who in the TV. hell is Les? Les? Les is not on TV <clears throat> anymore. He but. used to be the main anchor at WABY TV, Wavy TV in Virginia Beach. Yeah, I, mar- I, I married into yeah. this cousin. Yeah, yeah. Les. Les. And I won't ha- reveal yeah. his last name. How old would Les be? Les is probably fifty now. Would yeah. you say he's out of the business? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Hillary. Howard. Yeah, he's been yeah. He's fast. That's how Rob always used to watch me when I was working in Virginia Beach. That's how I first found there. it. I, I came down and I was drinking and I said, let's watch the news. Let's see what Les is doing. I said, oh my God, it's my intern. Yeah. I know him. <laughs> I could see, I don't know, I could see you doing a kid's show. I could sure, see I'd you do it. that. And, and because it would be <laughs> so, hey, it would be great for the kids yeah. and then it would be so blissfully insincere for the adults. Right. I need all the adults to leave the room now and right. kids, we're going to go back behind the curtain. Wait a minute. I can see Lowell's kids. I got a name for you, Captain Petals. <laughs> I was going to call Petals, it Petals the Clown. <laughs> Petals the Clown. <laughs> Petals the Clown. <laughs> get some. Get some. <laughs> do, 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 it's do, do, do. it's a, uh, WBAL Television now presents the Petals the Clown Show. <laughs> 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 it's the special it's Saturday morning kids the cartoons are over and it's time to bring in Pebbles the Clown yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey kids it's me Pebbles the Clown <laughs> <laughs> it's back to gerbil racing. Oh, oh you my know God. that? Um, I think I've told you this before. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm laughing so hard at that. I think I've told you this before. I, I'm not sure if I have on the air, but Lowell and I had uh, competed against each other for the ho- to be the host of the Fox Kids Club. It was going to be one of these shows when we were in high school. You were such showbiz kids. We, we, yeah. we got in line with probably 200 other people. I'm with three showbiz kids here. You guys mm-hmm. were always, I mean, you loved it. Oh, they were much age. more proactive than me. I would never audition you, for anything. You know what? Mm-hmm. When you called as Jimmy Stewart uh, with It's a Wonderful, that's pretty darn proactive for I what suppose. a kid of like 16 or 17. Yeah, that, that, and that's, yeah. That's, when, that's when you did We that. all went the same route on your show, though, because we would call you that's up true. constantly when yep. you're on Wava. That's true. And 
you know, always do our bits, and then you had us come in that, for that hour. And then that's the, now I'm beginning to feel really, really elderly. About no, that. you're no. fine. Well, we listen to those old tapes with the compressed, you know, audio, and everyone's high pitched. We got to take crazy. a break. Pedals the clown. Take us to commercial. Oh, uh, hey kids, stay with us. We'll be right back with more Michael Bear Show. <laughs> Oh, God, that makes me laugh. <laughs> you know, I'm so many laughs at the crusty laugh every time I hear it. And, and, and I think we have a show title today. I oh think we do, God. too. Pedals yeah. the Crown. Pedals the Clown. Yeah, that's it. And now it's time to go to Pedals' secret room. <laughs> uh, welcome you back. can't leave until you cry. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> And you're not a, you're not allowed to get out, kids, until you cry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara show. Uh, I am going to, uh, to the fantastic game with my uh, my date and my chaperones tonight. The date is Jimmy Cerrito, and the chaperones are my daughters, Catherine nice. and Elizabeth. And we got our tickets at ScoreBig.com. If you are taking your family to a game or any event, you know how expensive it can be. It's still expensive even when you get some deals like you know, we got mm-hmm. at ScoreBig. Mm-hmm. But you, you know what? Deal. You're not going to pay the max like you do on some of these other websites. And I'm here to tell you, I've been talking about it all week. At ScoreBig.com, you don't get those ridiculous, totally manufactured fees that jack the price up. And you can get great seats at up to 60% below box office price. Your first stop, whatever you want to see, is scorebig.com, where below box office prices are guaranteed. Pedals the Clown says Scorebig is great, isn't it, Pedals? It sure is, Mike. (laughs) (laughs) Imagine getting 30 bucks off your first order. When you enter the code <laughs> Imagine TMOS. That. Imagine that. Great seats below box office prices at an extra 30 bucks off with your first order. Oh, and no extra fees. I said that That's already. That's right. Scorebig.com. Check them out. Uh, I didn't even get to anything I wanted to talk about yet today on the show. Uh, we've covered uh, Lowell and uh, the weather. Mm-hmm. Grade yourself as a weatherman. That's what I want to do. Uh, your, your forecast, what would you give well, yourself? You see, the problem, the problem with me is, and just to keep it short, you know, I'm like the, I'm a backup. So I'm not on the main team. So I have my opinions, <laughs> yes. and I give them to sorry, them. You said and they're like, up and I had to play they're like, oh, yeah. right, I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, I think you guys maybe are going a little strong on this forecast. You know, mm-hmm. a little too much snow. And they're like, okay, go play in the back. You know, like yeah. like that's kind of how they yeah. are with me. As right. a rule, so, do you favor the American or the European model? Uh, the European has been showing up more and more to show that uh, it's, it's more accurate. It's a little more accurate. And you went out yeah. and got your degree. You are a meteorologist. Yes, yes. So you know, I have uh, my meteorology degree. Yes. Yeah. Now Baltimore. Uh, I really I, I noticed uh, in many many ways, even though only an hour separates our cities, pretty different uh, weather patterns this year. You got a little bit more snow than we did this year, maybe, uh, or uh, did you get less? Snow slightly, it was kind of the same. The, the problem is, and I know that you you guys will say what you want to say, but I I cannot tell you how difficult it is because of the mountains and because of the ocean. How difficult it really is to predict. A uh, winter storm event in this area. I know that, and it, it it, if so, we're going to talk it is seriously so about hard. it, yeah, I believe though, and I don't think there's any memo that comes out, and I don't think you have a news director that comes to you and says, mm-hmm. "Hey, man, tweak yeah. this up." Right, but is it not? And and listen, you, you, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. No, here, no, no, I know. But is it not in some way the unspoken kind of rule that if there is a model that's showing some sort of potential, you guys go bat s because that is going to trans translate into ratings it i can't say that it's that it's a hundred percent that but if you have if, if you're looking earlier in the week and there's a chance then mm-hmm. they'll just they'll keep that chance okay but but legitimately day before like with this la- the, the one that didn't work out when we were in florida yeah that one really did look like it was going to be a major snow event, a monster. And it, and if if you if a day bef- if twenty four hours out, it's looking like a, a major event. Yes, right. I would say that we're going to hype that. And up. I would imagine that if you've got something that is pointing to that, one of your models is saying that it's going to be a massive snowstorm. And, All of the models, and said you go that that and you try to low be. key it, you're going to be responsible for more carnage. If right. you if you say, ah, I really don't think this is going to be anything to worry about, and then you get whacked, you're in more trouble than if you say, oh, we dodged a bullet there, we're fine, we right. uh, we avoided that that big problem it's always best to side on caution but so you, I, do you like doing that more than the anchor work or do you like being a uh, johnny weatherman I, no i i really like doing the weather because it's i like the science behind it and i like playing you with put all your, the computer I mean, you put stuff. your years into that you put your hours yeah, into that three so. three hours or three hours three years of school right like, with a fall spring and summer semesters like technically lowell back. is a scientist <laughs> 
But I love when he really f's up when they go when they're at the Today Show and then they go to break. You love any any way oh. possible that he f's Did up. Did he and tell when, you about that? I he, sent it to him. You oh. sent that to me, and it's just like it, Mark will only write down. Look at this, and right. I see uh, Channel 11, and I know it's going to be you. <laughs> and what was the most recent one? Where The most the- recent was, uh, it was over the weekend, and it was the Today Show. Right. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, now let's see what's happening in your neck of the woods. Mm-hmm. And they go to Lowell. <laughs> and Lowell is just standing there, staring at the camera for a good five seconds. So what happens, you know, the, the they call those the Roker weathers. It's t- it's a 10-second bumper, just to do a quick right. forecast. Right. Very, so, very, very time-sensitive. Right. Yes. So we pre-record those. Okay. Really? We pre-record those because just the way the breaks work and the uh, and other production elements we have to do, they pre-record Like those. about a week in advance? Yeah. <laughs> might as well have been. So I started doing it, and the um, I said something backwards. So I knew it was on tape. So I'm like, ah, let's just do that again. And mm-hmm. I'm good. it's a good thing I didn't say OF or OS because um, we did it, and then we did the correct one, but they put the wrong one in the um, in the machine. In the, oh. So then it goes, and uh, here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. And blissfully and for the viewer, but not for you. It, no. lo- it looks so damn live. It yeah. looks like you are oh, it screwing looks, up. It looks completely live. And, and you, then I'm like, oh, let's do it again. And you look totally defeated, and I think that's what you enjoyed most about Oh, that about was it, wonderful. Where he yeah, kind of went, great. ha, 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 and he yeah. walks off. How yeah, common yeah. is it for the people in the control room to totally f you like that? Uh, it's not that common anymore because of the computers. But for some reason, you know, it's like that Digicart system, but for but right. for TV, right. and they just put the wrong one. That they just put the wrong wow. one in. I mean, and wow. what's interesting, he told me that if he were to have said OS, oh, I screwed this up, mm-hmm. he probably would have caught a lot of heat. For I probably that, would have been even suspended though it wasn't for that, his even though it wasn't fault. my fault. Because they always say you should always know that your mic, you pretend that your microphone is always on. How cool is it having your best buddy uh, being on the magic box every night? I mean, uh, how cool is that? You know, or are you insanely jealous? Uh, mm-hmm. The latter, yes. Because you want to perform. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're sitting I, here. I do, I do get very excited when I see him up there. But you know, I've got Lowell on TV. I've got my brother, the rock star, right. and yeah. then here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let me here look. I am handing you, uh, you know, letters from people with disgruntled T-shirt yes. orders that don't get their T-shirts. Follow-up question, Lowell. How cool is it that your best buddy is a business manager for a podcast? It's amazing, isn't it? I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, you know, he's gonna lap you financially someday. You I know. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. He's gonna do it. It's gonna hit. I know. It's gonna. I think. Uh, I think three years from right, from now. <laughs> There's a chance. Yeah, four. Maybe four. Let's be let's be conservative. Be honest, Mike. Four is the way to do it. That's All right. Well, uh, congratulations on Thank your you, success. Sir. Thank and you. And I know it's a it's a wonderful uh, operation. I love I love everybody up there. I love Hearst and I love that company. It's yeah. uh, fun to go up there. I love visiting up there. I'll be doing my uh, little uh, charity ride tour coming up there, so I'll get a oh, chance nice. to come up to Baltimore and hopefully see Mickey and Amelia again, which is awesome. Always yeah, Hearst fun. Hearst is probably the best broadcast company in the business. I'm telling you. And I'm I'd like to even you. say hi to Dave Hill. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, he's a program director. I mean, I can give him crap. Hello, uh, David. So anyway, moving right along, uh, always time to gloat. I'd like to uh, just take this personal moment to uh, say, put your feet up, take your shoes off. Oh, no. It's time to meet up with the Boston Red Sox, oh. Boston born and Boston Red Sox. Relax, 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 and be a Sox watcher. You see, uh, Joel. Uh, Joe? Yeah. Joel? I'm, I'm sorry, Michael. Josh. Josh. Josh, Joe, Mark, Lowell. Lowell. You see, Jeremy. Josh, yeah. you see, that is no, the and Mike, Mike, yes. you were right. The Orioles did lose last night. Okay, so the uh, Red, so Sox, the Red Sox, Sox are now Sox the are... only undefeated team. Wow. Two and zero in the American League. Two and zero. Hey, it's two and zero. Embrace it. It's two and zero against the Yankees. I will mm-hmm. take it. I will enjoy it. And that is the uh, back in the nineteen forties when I was watching my baseball. Oh God! <laughs> that is the television theme song that played when my Red Sox would come on Channel Twenty Two in Springfield, Massachusetts, and I would try to look at the ghosty picture from my rabbit ears on my black and white TV <laughs> as I was watching the Red Sox play whoever they were playing and it was I mean I saw Do you some, know I've yes. looked for that song for 10 years I don't think it exists on YouTube I don't think it exists in anywhere Didn't except your Didn't someone head. send it to us? No, no. Mm-hmm. We've never heard Put it. Put in uh, Channel 38 Okay. This is into YouTube? Channel 38 Red Sox uh, broadcast theme okay it reminds just me just google it lol you used yeah. to sing this song a lot it reminds me of the uh, washington capitals old theme song what? icebreakers goal shakers the caps <laughs> you know what the I've washington got capitals Ooh, <laughs> goal shakers the caps hold on a second because joe beninati of the uh, washington capitals broadcast was referencing this uh 
this song, just the okay, other Okay, well, I've got, you two, do you, several do you of them have come up. We have the WSBK TV 38 Vintage 1989 Boston Red Sox. No, song. that will not okay. be it. Red Sox Nation Boston Red Sox theme song by Woods. Do you want to try that? Maybe. Okay, let's see if this works for mm-hmm. us. <laughs> this is Uh-oh. exciting, isn't it? Yeah. No, that's no. Yankees suck. I hate that. Well, and I see, hate it when I take my kids to a game and they say that. I don't like saying the other team suck in, in, a, in a cheer. That, to me, is a bad part. Yeah. It was yeah. mislabeled. It was mislabeled. This is the Beantown Swing Orchestra, Mike. Let's have a ball at Fanny Oh, that's horrible. Is that the song, though? <laughs> no, hey, that's Mike, not it. No. That's you singing. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> I'm Save sorry. this for the act. Would you like to hear the yeah. Would you like to hear the Whaler song? Turn my thing up, Rob. Okay. All right, hold on. I love hold that. on. Put it in the act. All right. All right. All right. You got it? You got me turned yeah, up? Yeah, go ahead. All right, here we go. Huh? Oh. There's Come some on. sound. Is this the Whaler yeah. song? That's what the ra- the Whalers would uh, yeah, skate I on the ice song too. I love when they drop the needle, but leave that in. It's called yeah, Brass absolutely. Bonanza. You can hear the crackling right before it starts. It's like the needle because on one side they sold that, mm-hmm. and on the other side was a forty-five of the uh, longest fight in the history of the World Hockey Association. Is oh, it- really? Yeah. Here's another Red Sox song, Mike. Is this it? It's summer again up in Boston. You know, Hartford, Hartford Whalers had the best uh, goal horn. Yes, like they, really? they had the best one. And yeah. I'm, I and I love and I love 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 their logo as well. Oh, it's well, great! Mike, I yeah. still think that's Have the I coolest. And they love uh, the kids love that logo up in New England. Like I went to a Boston Red Sox game and I had an old uh, vintage. They sold a vintage Whalers sweatshirt which I bought immediately. I remember. And I had more twenty somethings coming up to me and saying, "Hey, that is fantastic! They love that logo." I have a uh, fraternity brother who I believe he's the GM for their the minor league hockey team, the Connecticut Whale. Yeah. Yeah, the Connecticut and it's the Whale. Same lo- and it's the same logo. Yeah, it's a variation of the, yeah. of the logo. I have a, I somewhere floating around somewhere. I've got a Connecticut Whale uh, logo too, and I would love to see that town get a hockey team. Yeah. it's been a while since we've played it, and I actually have it handy. Do you want to hear the brawl in the mall? Just a little of it. Uh, if you, you know what, any excuse. This is all right. Yeah. Let me set it up. Please. The other night I was watching Slapshot, and uh, I was watching this and explaining to somebody that the uh, Jimmy uh, is a big friend of the Hanson brothers, right? Who, yeah, who were uh, actually the Carlson brothers, mm-hmm. and they really did play in the NHL, and Jack Carlson uh, has been in this living room, mm-hmm. uh, seating where uh, Lowell is sitting right mm-hmm. now, nice and, guy. and it's really, really amazing that these guys were not only legitimate hockey players, but they were one of them, at least Jack was, was an enforcer, mm-hmm. was a goon, and mm-hmm. my dad and I, this is 19, does it say the date? I think it's 76, does that 76 make sense? 76 sounds right in the wheelhouse, that <laughs> would be, I would have been a junior, and I would have been going to a lot of hockey games with April my dad. April 11th. 75. Wow. I actually do have April the eleventh, nineteen seventy five. My dad Almost. and I are at this game. It begins with the uh, enforcer for the Minnesota Fighting Saints was a guy by the name of Bill Butters. It's the only name I remember from the tape. Not only did he look, he had the big lamb chop sideburns with the jet black hair. He looked like a goon. He was a goon. And uh, it starts with uh, Bill Butters. And then Bill Butters uh, takes the captain, who was not a fighter, Larry Plo, and Cole Coxon. My favorite part of the tape. And it's a huge fight. And when he's, there's one part, I don't know, who's the announcer that's doing the play? Bob Newmeyer, who now works for NBC. When Newmeyer. And there's the says, horse racing car. He says, and here comes Butters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, let's go to the Listen, stage. I Listen. talked about Bill Butters, a conspicuous absentee in period number one. But the first shift, he's out there drawing a minor penalty. Larry throwing some punches at Larry Plow. Larry Plow went after him, too. And uh, that gives you some idea. If you're a regular follower of the Whalers. Well, now, Brackenberry and Selwood want to go, and here they go. Brackenberry and Selwood. Brackenberry gets two right hands. Selwood wrestling him now. Fifteen feet inside the line. His butter sneaks up. Shot on Plow. Bill Butter sneaks From behind. Butter That's Plow. all. Here comes the win. We've got a wild all right, and it goes on like that. It does, and uh, you need to restate one point that I yes. think is the most charming thing about it. The reason that fight audio exists is because the team put it out on a 45 RPM record. That's why it's they all over the internet. They actually sold it wow. as a record. And I owned it, and uh, there's one thing where the guy goes, get spun around, get spun around, yes. get spun around, and because I, I played it so much on my little record <laughs> player that I had a nick in it, and it was like, get spun around, get spun around, get spun around, and it was, and I, I you know, it's 
it's so funny because uh, Alan Hangsleben, who uh, is a friend of mine, right, and uh, was at a recent charity uh, hockey game that charity, I think, charity when we did do. when we did the charity classic yeah. with the Capitals. Hank was there. Mm-hmm. Hank's in his sixties yeah. now. I'm so freaking old. And uh, yeah, he, Mike, that fight was almost forty years ago. And, oh my God, it's yeah. so hard to believe that. And, and, oh, and Hank Slavin was at that fight, and we talked about that, and wow. it was a promotional thing, and it just what it's he, back in the days where they encouraged fighting. Something I wish they'd go back to. Yeah. The was that the guy yeah. that was skating uh, without the helmet? But yes. playing? Oh my God, he was cool. The guy that was he in was his sixties so, that was skating yeah, circles yeah. around guy. everybody out there. Such a tough guy, and really one of the nicest guys. And uh, flash forward, I come down to Washington D.C. And I start meeting people like this, and we became friends. Right. And it was just a dream come true. These guys that I had watched on the ice, older than me, and uh, just been, uh, you know, such a fan of it was. Uh, it was really truly incredible. That's awesome. It's it good that you're excited and not depressed. Uh, about what? About the fact that he's old? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not playing. Oh, well, that's You know, true. so I'm still kind of observing. Yeah, right. Because right, right, my right. body has failed so much that I can't play anymore. Mike, mm. I wish... What's that say? I'm watching my old... He- oh, God, now I am depressed. <laughs> I think what you should change... Change your grammar. Your body hasn't failed. Yeah. It's failing. It's slowly failing. Slowly mm. failing. Mind of an 18-year-old, body of a 70-year-old. That's right. That's me, ladies <laughs> that's and gentlemen. That's the average. Uh, let me see. Did you see the merman? I'm not talking about that. Ethel that merman? Was, that's, that's what I call bad show prep here. <laughs> Uh, date night for me and Jimmy. Uh, we're going to the uh, hockey game tonight. Hope it'll there's be, a fight for you. <laughs> it'll yeah. be. It'll be. I love a good go. Yeah. I really do. Uh, Dale Hunter came into my studio years ago, and he had like twelve stitches over his right eye. And I looked at him. This is tough hockey players that I absolutely love. And I said, "How'd you get those stitches?" He says, "Sometimes you got to take one to give two. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I love that guy. Damn I do. Honor. I like that. So I'm going tonight. What are the? Uh, how are the arrangements for transport? Are you meeting here? Are you meeting at Jimmy's? Are you meeting uh, at the venue? We're going to leave from here. Okay. It's uh, all four of us going down, and uh, you know it'll be my daughters with their red jerseys for the mm-hmm. Capitals. So I got a new Capitol sweatshirt. I'll be wearing, and Jimmy will be wearing his shorts. XX, of course, which, yeah. which he wears all the time. And wings. <laughs> and you've got a designated driver in your daughter. Uh, we're mm-hmm. not drinking. Oh. Jimmy can have whatever. I don't tell. I'm not my brother's keeper. Yeah. What's but the I mean, size on that sweatshirt? XXX? X, X, uh, X, 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 X. <laughs> wow. No, it's a... It's a uh, <laughs> that was nice. That? that was really... You know, you're what? always good for... Oh, throw something Uh-oh. at you. No, please, no. You're always good for one of those. Horrible. <laughs> well, we're 56 minutes into the broadcast, and he's getting bored, so he wants to I poke you. To, says, you, know, you know what, you know what it was? You know what it was? It wasn't about him. That's yes. right. It wasn't you about him. I haven't poked fun at you the whole show. Are you I have to get one in. Are you? Are, that was a fat joke. Oh, it was just It's a, a lot joke. of X's, uh, more <laughs> than I want. Just Actually, joke. to be honest with you, I got... I it got, was a joke. It's too big for me. My it sweatshirt, it my, for you. my sweatshirt is way, and I've washed it now three different times trying to shrink it, and I cannot shrink well, it. What down. you have to do, so then, Mike is getting. And I, I would think a five X would be uh, <laughs> would have shrunken by now. What you're going to have to gain weight to make it fit. That's yeah. right. I'm gonna have right. to have Can some we get chicken. some ch- churros over here? Please? <laughs> <laughs> have some chicken. All right, <laughs> screw you all. Ice cream no, no, filled no, churros. I think uh, it'll be fine. One final word before we go to break here. I did want to say congratulations, NBC. The suits win. Uh, Jay and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And everybody making nice and la di da di da and little cute Jimmy. Life is always such an easy it's path to the top. The lead Jimmy story Fallon's going to get the today the Tonight Show, yes. and he's going to get it in 2014. And Jay, Jay's making jokes. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> I'm getting along. I'm getting along with the suits at NBC. April Fools. Ooh, edgy Jay. Yeah. Right to the end. You know Jay Leno. Right to the end when they ant you up the eh, you're uh, you're still going to be that bland yep. company man. Not not funny, and I'd like to see you know everybody enjoyed the whole Conan thing. Sure, yeah. when Conan had the integrity just to go screw you, right. but this is exactly now what the suits. When I saw the Today Show doing a piece on Jimmy Fallon and Jay Leno, I went, "Oh, so it's now been sanctioned." And you know what? They gave Jay Leno a big suitcase full of cash right. mm-hmm. to go out like the wimp that he is. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. I, mm-hmm. I, I find it difficult to look at it any other way. It's true. It, you're correct. Yeah. And actually, we'll have more tape about that in the audio. Oh, okay, vault, then I'll wait. So. It'll it'll turn your stomach. It's, it's sickening. Just, yeah. It really. I mean, I you know, not that I want everybody fighting, but at some point, you know, I think the way even Jay Leno was handled was kind of rough at the end, and I would have loved to see some acknowledgement of that. Yeah. You know, you know, you don't have to fight, but a little backbone is nice. Absolutely. You know, just a little. I, I, before we go. It, it never ends well with any of these things. Right, like it ever. Yes, even with Johnny, everything. It was, it, but Johnny was uh, 
completely on his own terms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, you know, there well, were... There, different times, there, there, Yeah, there were different... Yeah, but now it's just... I, I hate it when they're all like, oh, we're going to cover them now. What? Well, they like each other. Yeah. Jimmy's the nicest guy in the world. Rob, will have more of that when we come back on the Mike O'Mara Show. Yes, Hey, Lowell. Yeah. You need a new kitchen? You know, I needed a new sewer line, but why not? Kitchen's great, too. <laughs> That's what perfect. the hell does that even mean? Perfect segue, you hump. Uh, uh, this segment of our program is brought to you by RC Kitchens. You've heard us say, if you're outside the D.C. area, RC Kitchens might still be able to help you. Well, it is true. Just provide your measurements... Not your body, man. No, no, no. 36, no. 24. RC Kitchens will design and specify plans you can use anywhere in the world. Cool. Uh, the design oh. aspect of RC Kitchens is one of the best parts of this entire business. Oh, that is so cool. I didn't know they did that. Well, this will save you thousands over designer showrooms and mm. relieves you of the horrible home center experience. Yeah. I've been through that. Uh, yeah. I don't want to deal with that. You get a precise plan and a detailed items list, your passport to a spectacular kitchen no matter where you live. No uh, need to uh, do it yourself. You can get it planned for you and specified down to the centimeter. No problem at all. RC Kitchens is Local, but also global. And you can have hand-built, all-wood, top-quality cabinets for about the same price as the mass-produced brands. Get Mercedes quality at Prius prices. We say that all the time. He is a delightful guy to talk to. Rory Callahan is somebody who's a small business owner supporting our small business, and he would love to hear from you today. Let me give you the phone number, 301 537 Three five one five. That number again is three zero one five three seven three five one five, or at rckitchens dot com. I had helped my father several years ago remodel his kitchen. He did it himself, right? And uh, and I was kind of his his helper. And it was a Lucky long, guy. a mm. long project that took a lot of work. And right. at the end of it, my mom said to me. Hey, you know, this must have been a great experience for you. Did you learn anything? And I said, yeah, to hire someone else. Because that it, it is just a big pain in the butt. The thing I like when I talk to Rory about RC Kitchens uh, is, number one, I love a small business owner that's going to sure. supply uh, mm-hmm. us with advertising mm-hmm. dollars. Mm-hmm. And that's the bottom line. I love that because he's doing the same thing we are, and hopefully we can help them. We have helped small business owners on this podcast, and we are a small business owner, even though we are global as well. That's the way the world works now. And uh, I just really enjoy talking to the guy. He gets it. He gets the show. And he's already had some contact with our listeners. Oh, yeah. And keep them coming, folks. Please. Let me give you the number again. That is really and, awesome. Yeah, we're giving him a little extra something. Uh, are you being sincere? You, you what? know what? You are a pain in the ass. So never having no, I back. need some of them granite countertops. 301 537 3515. We can't all work for corporate media. No, we Lowell can't. Lowell Meltzer. No. I did for a long time. That's true. It's tough. A long time. Longer than you, you son of a bitch. I know. Bitch. But I learned uh, from anyway. watching you, so Thank that's you. the biggest that, compliment. That's, that's, can you open that's the thing? That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you <laughs> open the thing? Right. Let's open up the audio vault for today and take your time on it because I'm doing the news today because Buzz isn't here. Oh, you yeah. know, oh, and you know what? Oscar's not here, and I wonder if somewhere in a plane above the Atlantic Ocean, Oscar's mm. tuning out. Oh, let's Please. listen. I think I hear his plane. Hold on. Oh. That's a joke. But great please for the tell me they, Please tell me they didn't fly first class. Uh, they may have gotten upgraded because they have a connection at United. That's we'll right. find of course, out. Of course they do. Well, Oscar is the kind of person that might not tell either. So yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll grill him on it. And you know where they're headed to, Mike? Where they're, they're headed to China. <laughs> Hello, Oscar. <laughs> Hello, Todd. <laughs> We are very, my father and I are very happy to have you here. I don't know why I am doing this voice. It's most honorable. Your voice is most honorable, but I think... Mr. Todd, I come to your room at night. You are the most handsome American I have ever seen. That's terrible. <laughs> that is. Stop it. And then an Stop Oscars it. room. Boo. <laughs> um, we are still accepting entries for our Jack Cassidy contest. Today's entry from Jeffrey Casa, who is actually snowboarding. Awesome. In a beautiful vista. Okay. Check it out on our YouTube page. We know where it is. Uh, he says it, but I can't make it out. I okay. can make out his name, but you can hear what the most important thing is. He says that he's Jack Cassidy. Snowboarding. Hello, boys. This is Jeff Cassa at Summit at Snoqualmie. Listen to the Michael Mara Show. I'm Jack Cassidy. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jeff. As he's going down the yes. mountain. Yeah, so That's great. a good one. I like that. I like lot. that one. Very scenic and very impressive. Now, you can get your uh, Jack Cassidy t shirts at michaelmarishow.com. Yeah. Thank you. I think one thing we share, the one reason, I think one of the main reasons I wanted to get into broadcasting was Johnny Carson. Okay. I mean, he was the the gold standard. I used to stay up late. I used to sneak and watch it when people didn't know I was watching it. He had the fun element. Uh, he w- did. Watching him, you would see the interaction with these big celebrities, and they'd be kind of giggling and having mm-hmm. fun. I dug that as well. And a yeah. lot of that is just absolutely gone. I think every now and then Letterman flirts with it. I think right. Letterman yep. still can grab what the magic of television Craig still is. Craig Ferguson has a little of it. Craig has it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is what sickened me the most out of this whole Tonight Show thing, is last night, this is Fallon coming out on, on the Joe. Jimmy Fallon show. Here he is. Jimmy Fallon! Oh. Cheapening something so cheap oh, already. No, but he's, that, that's what he's, doesn't anybody get it? Well, that's his I'm g- not, it's not because I'm 53 years old, people. It's because I know this dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but there's nobody that he loves better than Looking in that mirror and saying, I'm cutesy little Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, he was. And uh, I just thought... Just like a few more laughs. If there was a gracious way to handle what he's been through... That's not the way to begin it. No, you just mm-hmm. and that's it's and he comes out and he, he belittles the whole process of it. He says, and until then, we're going to put our utmost efforts into whatever show this is because yeah. that's cute and it's not it, really anything. It would have been better if he came out with the Arsenio Hall <laughs> theme song, <laughs> or like the Chevy Chase show. He put whoa, 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 whoa. fish behind him. He did get emotional. The only thing about Jimmy Fallon, yes. and here's a little prediction, okay. and we're a year out, over a year out, so I can make this prediction now. Well, less than a year because it's so. Say February fourteenth. That's when they're going to be doing this, yeah, yeah, making this so. move. Yeah. The, 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 no matter what you are, there is no guarantee that you slide into that time slot and life is all sweetness oh, and roses. Yeah. No. And Mr. Fallon, here's a prediction. This is when you're going to get the real competition and you're not going to be the golden child of Lauren Michaels forever. And I'll tell you, you're going to be going up against Kimmel, who I think is one of the funniest guys he is. in Kimmel the business. Is, Kimmel is really... I think he's the gold standard and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. A lot more eyes on you at 11.30 than 12.30. And CBS, Dave ain't going to do it forever. And, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, who knows? I think Dave is... Is all but given up. Yeah. Not in, and I don't mean that in a in a way that demeans him. I think he's going to be Dave for as long as he wants to be Dave, mm-hmm. and he will, you know, hang around number two, and he'll do fine. I think he's still my favorite, but he's not the future. Certainly, we'll and, have to see what happens. Yeah. It's just uh, it, when the suits win, I don't like to. See Fallon it. did get emotional last night. I'll spare you that. I think the classiest player in all of this is Conan. Okay. Do you hear what Conan said? What? And he and everyone thought he would come out swinging because you know he'd been dicked over before. Very classy what Conan said last night. It was announced today, just a couple of hours ago, that uh, Jimmy Fallon is going to take over The Tonight Show next year. And I want to congratulate Jimmy. That is a really fun gig. He is going to do a fantastic... It is. It is. It's a really fun gig. <laughs> you laugh. It's a fun gig. And you know what? Uh, Jimmy uh, is the perfect guy to do it. He's going to do a fantastic job. So congratulations, Jimmy. It would have been really easy for him to take a cheap shot, but I think it's nice that he's a classy guy. I wish his show was funnier. I would have uh, expected maybe from Conan a little self-deprecating humor on his yes. own end, and I was surprised there wasn't any of that. But he just handled it above But that's board. why he's on TBS. Exactly. No. That's where he ended up. Now, Letterman, of course, if you watched him last night, his head just appeared to be spinning about what happened. Because <laughs> he, he hates the he hates NBC he more hates, than He hates oh, yeah. the whole thing. He hates right. the whole thing. I like this little exchange he had with Paul. So here's what it's going to be, Paul. It's going to be uh, you and me and two guys named Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Dave. Who, Jim? And I don't care. Jimmy, don't care. Jimmy, and, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Dave. Dave, and I, I don't, don't care. care. <laughs> right. And I don't care. And I did like that uh, Letterman said he's going to miss the ability to do his Jay Leno impression. And they also did top ten things that they'll miss about Leno. And one of them was riding around in an antique fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But anyway, uh, I hope the dust settles and uh, all good things happen to the people that deserve good things, blah, 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 blah. Right. Does um, even, has anybody even watched Late Night TV? I anymore? watch Letterman every morning. I have, every morning I watch I have Letterman and I have Conan and I have Kimmel, mm-hmm. all T-Vode, and, and I, can't even, I can't even begin to tell you the last time I even looked. My new thing is... I look when Rob will tell me something happened. It's once every eight months. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's about right. I yeah. never I never seem to watch it as late as I am up sometimes. Yes, one o'clock mm-hmm. in the morning, I get a text. You know when he told me you were coming on the show? <laughs> At like 1.05. Yeah, oh, by right. the way, 
Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nine hours of sleep at that point. <laughs> You're like, By the way, Lowell's coming. So I woke up this morning and I say, Lowell's coming in today? <laughs> no! <laughs> no, but no! I, I, now, I now, what I do is I selectively watch the, the talk shows at night on YouTube. I'll just pull mm-hmm. up some stuff and watch the bits, and, and yeah. that's enough for me. I, I wish I wish I did more. You know the one I don't tape that I should? What's that? And that's uh, Craig Ferguson. I, I should, agree with you. I should TiVo that one, and I should put it on there. The thing about Craig Ferguson is there's never anything dynamic because of his time slot and his pull of the celebrities. However, it's always a solid entertainment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's great. He's, he's just, just naturally funny. Yep. I can watch him talk, and that's it. Just put Love a that. camera on him, and I dig that. And, he's got a, and incidentally, I don't know how they mic the audience or what kind of audience they get or how they warm their audience up. He has has the greatest audience in late night television. They are always screaming with mm-hmm. laughter, and it's that meth. helps. It's mad. No, it's, it's actually meth. it's the fiber optic cables. <laughs> That's yeah. it is. with the rubber nipple that I feel like an idiot. That's right. going. I'm going to my car, getting it out of the trunk, and rehooking it up just oh to see what it sounds. So I can go a couple extra minutes since you're doing news, right? You, well, I mean, I've got. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty fat today. Okay. <laughs> Well, you do whatever you want. All right, I, I, just, I, I just make I have sure to drop I, a story. I will. I understand. That could be the end of the world. You want to feel old? <laughs> do you want to feel old? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Do you know that this marks the 30th anniversary of the Huey Lewis album Sports? Does it really? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I always, I always think Sports is a key album. for Don't me. be fearful, Rob. <laughs> that- the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. You love your smart smoke. I like my smart smoke cigar. It's like uh, FDR's cigarette holder. Yeah. The Huey Lewis album Sports was the first compact disc I ever held in my hand. And was it's hard it for me, It's hard for me yeah. to believe it's been 30 years. And to celebrate it, Huey Lewis made a video with Weird Al Yankovic. And I know what you're saying. Boo. Oh, but I think you're going to like it Boo. when you hear it. Mm-hmm. It is a tribute. To Oscar, a ma- what do you think about that? Do you like that thing? Boo. Yeah. Right, it's mm-hmm. a tribute to American Psycho. Mm-hmm. In which Huey Lewis kills Weird Al Yankovic. Okay. I think you'll enjoy this. Do you like American Psycho? <laughs> it's okay. Hey. Yes, Al? Why are there newspapers all over the place? Is that like a Huey Lewis on the news joke or something? <laughs> no, Al. <laughs> is that really? Yes, it is. Wow, I'm surprised. <laughs> Do you have a kicker? No. Uh oh. I hate Weird Al. Yeah, it's hard. I hate everything about why, Weird Al. There's nothing funny thought, about Weird Al. That's why I thought you'd like to hear him getting an axe in his I, head. I, I didn't I don't know. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It was I, do just, have a it was, I like the Huey like say, Do you like American Psycho? Yeah. And when Huey says that I'm laughing and then you hear Why are there newspapers on the floor? I it sounded hear that like every week. <laughs> sounded like Lowell. It did. It did. Why <laughs> are there newspapers all over the Is this a Huey Lewis and the news? No. It's yeah. my favorite meteorologist, Weird Al. Wasn't <laughs> that like Weird Al? Al explaining the joke, a little yeah. bit overdoing yeah. it. Yeah. But it went back to you. If you watch the video, I predict you'll like it. Okay, all right. I I, I think the best Weird Al though is I'm fat. The the video. Thanks for that, Lowell. Have and you what's seen the it? what's the song parody? What was I'm the, bad from I'm bad Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Actually, Weird Al's best ham, stuff is Ham on mm-hmm. his his, ham polka, on whole week. his his polka stuff is great. His polka stuff is pretty funny. Like his polka. A- stuff. A- after the uh, second one, then it got a little stale. You, you put them. Uh, you get a dinghy. You put carrot top, and you put Weird Al <laughs> yank of it on, and you push it away from the dock. All right. <laughs> let before us the hurricane hits. Let us close as we begin with your favorite, Mr. Right. James Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel, talking about all the stuff going on in late night TV. It's a big night uh, in the world of late night television as you probably heard it was announced officially today that starting in february of next year after the olympics i will take over as new host of the tonight show on nbc <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I spoke to jay on the phone today and he excuse me one second <laughs> Okay, um, apparently it's a different Jimmy that's uh, going to be listening to the Are you sure? Jay Leno passed the torch to Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> okay. Um, does anybody know what the return policy is on a yacht? <laughs> and that, Mike, is your Magic Audio Vault. You know what? I like Kimmel does some real schmaltzy yeah, shit sometimes. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And he doesn't, he doesn't mind going there. And you no. know what? He doesn't give an S about what's going on. No, I think no. he's very happy where he is. Absolutely. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with the news right after this, everybody. Hey!
Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Here's the news. Sound Buzz is uh, getting some uh, medical stuff taken care of yep. today, and uh, we will uh, wish him well with that. And he will be back hopefully tomorrow. And uh, Buzz feel better, and we're all uh, very. So that's very... the cover story for the hair coloring. Yes, that's exactly what it is. He's getting all right. He's getting his body hair done. <laughs> yes, all of it. She does every year. This segment of the uh, Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our Amazon page. Now you can save up to seventy percent on all jewelry just in time for Mother's Day, Father's Day, and graduations. And if kicks are more your style, save up to. 60% on athletic shoes. Save money and support the show. The banner ad at MikeOmeraShow.com will take you directly to your account at home, school, church, or work. Shop through MikeOmeraShow.com slash Amazon. Do it! All that right. is awesome. Are you ready for it? <laughs> <laughs> your sincerity. <laughs> your sincerity kills me, Malzer. Come uh, on, Lil. Can't you just let it scab? You know what Please. I'm going to do? Let me do this because I just, uh, for some reason, uh, didn't I have transitional music at some yes. point? I'm actually, you know yeah. what? It just occurred to me. I'm pulling it up That's right now. That's the fun way I like of yeah. doing the mm-hmm. news. All right. I like that. That I was, was gonna born when uh, I was sitting in for Rob when he was somewhere, probably and was Iowa. Like, and we had like a stager in yes. between them. Yes. And, and, and I didn't realize that until we started doing the news, and I'm like, hey, that is so much fun to I do have it. Like yeah. Are you ready for to kick off the news, Mike? And then a little bit of George Carlin, too. Dateline Korea! <laughs> <laughs> The United States said it would soon send a missile defense system to Guam to defend it from North Korea. As the U.S. military adjusts to what Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel called a real and clear danger from Pyongyang. (laughs) (laughs) Hours later, South Korea's Yonhap News Agency said North Korea had moved what appeared to be a mid-range Musadon missile to its east coast. It was not clear if the North planned to fire the rocket or was just putting it on display as a show of force. Did they see anyone trying to light the fuse? I'm the newsman. I'm not I, oh, going to I'm make sorry. a joke about that. That's we'll very serious. serious. Right. I just hope I played Musadan. Yes, I did. That was correct pronunciation. Uh, there was no clear understanding if the North planned to fire the rocket or was just putting it on display as a show of force. One South Korean government source was quoted as saying. Music, please. Oh, you want to hey, Mike, things? and, uh, you know, two hours ago, CNN reported that uh, the U.S. had intercepted communications uh, uh, from North Korea that says that the uh, missile launch is coming in days or weeks. I, I see. I think that still might be BS on their mm-hmm. part. I think this is posturing. It's impossible to tell. They are such a closed society, though, outside of our most sophisticated intelligence technology. I don't think we're really going to know. And that's what worries me. But yeah. I base it on Richard Engel sitting in the middle of Seoul, South Korea. Mm-hmm. Right. And you watch the people walking around. And you say to yourself, everything's going to be okay because, you know, they're getting ice cream cones on the street. I'm right. not that worried because the missile they put on display looked like something from the props department at the Space 1999. Cue the music again, though, Rob, because. Hackers apparently broke into at least two of North Korea's government-run online sites Thursday. Uh, <laughs> as tensions rose on the Korean Peninsula. What are you doing? The North's Twitter and Flickr account stopped sending out content typical of that posted by the regime in Pyongyang, such as photos of North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un meeting with military officials. Instead, a picture posted Thursday on the North Flickr site shows Kim's face with a pig-like snout and a drawing of Mickey Mouse on his chest. <laughs> now that's funny. Underneath mm. the text reads, Threatening world peace with ICBMs and nuclear weapons? Wasting money while his people starved to death. Yeah. Cue they that music again. You know, Mark, you actually did a better job with the tightness of the uh, of that, you know. Uh, so should I, do you want me to cue you on it? Like, just give you the big, every time we're yeah, ready. I think that you would be fantastic. Done that with me a middle-aged man who transported poultry for a living, and this goes out to Oscar Santana, has, has died. Oh, no. From a, <laughs> from a new strain of bird flu. Ah. <laughs> that is the fourth. Four of them. Death. Among 11 confirmed cases in China, the government and state media reported Thursday, the 48-year-old man who died in Shanghai is one of several among infected. The infected believed to have had direct contact with fowl. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, moving right along, ladies and gentlemen. Once the video went viral, Mike Rice's coaching days at Rikers workers were over. Rikers, now the question is whether anyone else will lose their jobs, including the athletic director who in December suspended and fined Rice for the abusive behavior and the university president who signed off on it. Rice was fired Wednesday, one day after a video surfaced of him hitting, shoving, and berating his players with anti-gay slurs. The taunts were especially troubling behavior at Rutgers, where freshman student Tyler Clemente killed himself in 2010 mm. after his roommate used a webcam to spy on him, kissing another man in oh, his yeah. dorm. Wow, that's a bad time to be from Rutgers. And mm. finally, Yes. An Indiana woman had her perfectly healthy five-year-old guide dog euthanized when she finally died from a long battle with cancer. 
so she could be buried with her pet and best friend. Oh, yeah, Sheila yeah, yeah. Stadler of Terre Haute, Indiana, died on March 8th after a long battle with cancer and opted to have her guide dog, Toffee, euthanized in order to be buried with her canine mm-hmm. companion. While Stadler's son, Andy, noted the dog was mourning the death of his mother, he did not know whether or not the grief was so much so that Toffee wanted to be killed <laughs> and buried with her. Yikes. My last word on that is, Beluga, you will be getting the same treatment. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate that. Uh, that's it. We want to thank Lowell Melzer for yeah, coming thank by. Yeah. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy the news? Did that move that was great enough? I, I felt it. like you should have tagged it with, this is Mutual Broadcasting. This is the Mutual Broadcasting. Tomorrow I will do, if Buzz is here, uh, we'll have good old Buzz coming back, thank God. Otherwise, I'll do a different anchor, man. Uh, we got to get out of here. The show is brought to you by Vistaprint.com. Call 250 them. cards for just $10. It's a great deal. Lowell, we'll see you on Channel 11 you in Baltimore. Yes. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.